All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you for making time for me. Uh, we've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to kind of go really quickly through a bunch of the things that we're thinking about. And just as a quick reminder, it's, everything for us starts with this mission. It's to responsibly, benef- to responsibly unleash the power of data for the maximum benefit of the American public and maximize the nation's return on its investment in data. The way we shorten that is that our job, as because we work for you, is to responsibly unleash the power of data for all of America. That's what we do. We think of a technology as neither radical nor revolutionary unless it benefits all Americans. That's our premise. And so how do we prioritize? When you get into this type of role and these type of things, how are we thinking about what we do? First, we focused on problems that exceed $1 trillion. 100 million people or more by impact or a population that has no recourse whatsoever and our job is to figure out how to give them a voice. So when we think about that, this is our strategic framework of how we operate. At the base level of it, it's about open data. Everything for us stems from open data. And then our verticals on top of that, in terms of that prioritization, is number one, healthcare. Super big problem. You've heard about it all morning. You're hearing about how much of it is happening now in data science here at this event. Incredible opportunity. Second, criminal and social justice. Everything that's happening in terms of police data, the community policing, all the activities there, body cameras, those type of things. And then finally, data talent. How do we enable a data-driven government and more people to come in to really use data more effectively in policymaking and providing services back to the American public? When we think about that, let's take a look a little bit into what we've done recently with open data. Our first starts with our executive order signed by President Obama that makes data by default open and machine readable. And when we say machine readable, we don't mean PDF. We mean really machine readable. So we're well on our way to making sure that this is true in every agency, and we want that to keep going 10x from where we are. Second, data.gov, the best place to go get all your data. If you are teaching a data class out there or doing any data training, I would love to see you building and you teaching your students on top of this. The amount of data, this is our country's data. Let's have our students work on this data and improve our country through understanding of this data and building new services and insights that we can then take back and put into policy. One of the ways that we've seen this is how people are using data and the community around mapping. Right after the earthquake in Nepal, the earthquakes in Nepal, who are the first responders? The modern day first responder is a data scientist. The first people who start to get all the information coming from those disparate signals that then put it together so that the first responders who are on the ground or are coming in hot and fast from other countries have the most up-to-date information so they can prioritize how to use their very precious resources. Next up, it just happened and launched a couple days ago, data from the U.S. Department of Education taking all the college data to provide transparency on where to go. This is created jointly with the U.S. Digital Service and 18F. Fantastic website, incredible amounts of data. This data isn't just through, through a static web page. You can hit the APIs. You can download the data. We'd love to see you use it. Come up with your own insights, integrations with your own products. Find more. And this is consistent with our executive order that it's the country's data. We want you to do more with it. We're continuing to open up more data and people to have hackathons. This is one that was done with Hack Housing with HUD, the urban, urban Development. They have started to release an incredible amount of data at the local level to understand about evaluations of programs. One of the ways to see the power of this, it was featured in the New York Times, is a work by Raj Chetty's team. And what they took is all IRS data to understand how performance happens when a kid moves from a high poverty area to a low poverty area. What happens in that case is really phenomenal because people have been doing experiments on this type of work, policy experiments, for decades, showing that some of these policies of moving people haven't necessarily shown the benefits that we'd expect. However, when you put together all the data, every single bit of data, what you find is that a kid moving from a high poverty area to low poverty can see as much as 40% lift in median income over the course of a lifetime. 
this idea of what happens when we bring huge data together to ask ourselves about very tough po uh, policy decisions is, can, is just flipped on its head because now we have the ability to ask ourselves novel things. And so we need to keep doubling down on that. Healthcare, our cornerstone there is precision medicine. The idea of taking the genome, the data science, the bioinformatics, the sensors, the electronic health records, bringing that all together into a research platform that is going to be there for the 21st century that responsibly empowers patients, participants, researchers, and providers. That's what we're focused on, and we need vendors, we need data scientists, we need educators to come to call to action, and we would love to hear you do more in this space. Social and criminal justice, police data initiative the president announced, is what happens when you get a whole bunch of police chief, social activists, and data scientists and lock them up in a room with the White House with a whole bunch of cupcakes. You find out there's a whole bunch of data that we actually can open up. That data is the thing that facilitates a conversation. If you don't believe me, this photo says it all. This is a superintendent of police from New Orleans coding his first line, pulling data from his database. This picture, who's in power here? When do you see the kid, a 13-year-old, in power with the police? This is what happens when we start to use data to change the tenor of the conversation. And now, preparing for the next generation, one of the things that we're obviously doing is we want to see the next generation of data scientists. This is, uh, this is Nathan Hahn, and he's been working on open data from, U uh, from the National Institutes of Health, working to figure out machine learning algorithms to help uh, to understand cancer testing sites and, and tumors. And how is he able to do that? open data, he's in 10th grade, and his algorithms and performance are up there with the best of them. And of course, you know, one of the things that we got to do is we got to invite a clockmaker to the White House. But what I want you to really think about in this case is that this is every day for a girl in a high school science class where the passion is extinguished. Our job is to use these kind of moments as inspiration and use data to figure out how that can be the kindling for the next generation on that inspiration. So how, what can you do? How do I need your help? Because we need your help. America needs your help. And what does that start to look like? The first, precision medicine. We need companies. We need technologists. We need to hear from you how you can help. We're open asking for things that you might want to do to push forward this agenda. Second, I would like to announce our first major event on suicide prevention on October 9th, and you can go to the OSTP blog and you can find out much more about this, is our first of an ongoing of interagency efforts to bring technologists, data scientists, and everyone together to start talking about invisible illnesses and suicide prevention. Third, social and criminal justice. Over the next month, we're going to start bringing top-tier data scientists, technologists together to break down new silos and improve services. We want to hear from you. And today, I'm also pleased to announce this. <laughs>
Thank you, absolutely. <laughs> These are the problems, and this is our time as a data science community to lead the way in eradicating these type of social injustices. It is our time to do this. The fourth way of this is on LGBT issues. And what I would like to announce today, thanks to a whole bunch of the transgender community coming up, they came up with their own idea to how to come up and identify problems. Because as a community, they are accounted. And so what you can do starting now with Twitter hashtag or on Facebook, transneed, or text to 844-TRNSNDS what the issues are if you are transgender and how you want to be counted, how you'd like to be defined, what are the services that you need and how data you believe can connect you with those right services. And so I just want to applaud that group and the effort for that they're doing for establishing and leading the way in this. And finally, on data ethics, absolutely, thank you. Data ethics, the charge I want to give to this community and the conversation we need to have, and I'll be having a couple sessions later today about this, is it, we must own this problem. We must define what that means. My ask is that every training course, every curriculum, every MOOC, every college class, every professional degree, every program at a company, you must have a data ethics curriculum that is intrinsic, not some bolt-on, but intrinsic to the training of every data scientist, every computer scientist, every data engineer, every data operations person. We must lead with defining what this program needs to look like. Finally, uh, and I'll do that, start that at 2 p.m. today. Finally, I just want to take a moment. Uh, last week, one, uh, fortunately, one of my colleagues uh, was tragically killed raising money for uh, cancer, uh, Jake Brewer. And one of the things that I think we've really found is critically important is what it means and why we need your help. And so we have this pledge that we're doing. I don't want to force this on anybody, but if you think this is something that's appropriate to you, I'd love to repeat the line and for you to repeat it after me. And because it's a pledge, I think, of what it means um, for what we can do. And so I'll repeat the line. If you're so good as to willing to join me in the pledge, I'd love it. I pledge to be an active American. To show up for others. To govern myself. To help govern my community. I recommit myself to my country's creed to cherish liberty as a responsibility. I pledge to serve and to push my country when right, to be kept right, when wrong, to be set right. Wherever my ancestors and I were born, I claim America and I pledge to live like a citizen. Thank you guys. Thanks for all the help.